Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Dead Malls, your one home for the coziest mall documentaries and everything Rita related. In tonight's episode, we begin our next major expedition of Season 6, which as you all saw in the intro will be the second Pittsburgh expedition, in which me and some friends tripped out east and saw some of the most fascinating and liminal malls across western Pennsylvania and even West Virginia. But to start us off today, we begin by traversing across Ohio and stopping at a Bowling Green's very own hidden gem, Woodland Mall. A mall which never really lived up to its potential and has been sitting dead for over 20 years, but still retains the same late 80s aesthetics, silver tile facading, and breathtaking golden ceilings and skylights. It's a doozy, and a beautiful doozy at that, so before I spoil any more, I'd like to take a moment and shout out our winner who was able to successfully guess the next mall. Very nice job exploring retails with Andrew. If you'd like to have your chance of being shouted out in the next episode, stick around for the next challenge. Anyways, let's enjoy the rest of this absolute jam, do our little drive around of the mall's exterior, then head in, tell the story of, and see how a BG's Woodland Mall was doing as of our visit in later June of 2024. Immediately when walking into Woodland Mall, we were struck by this charming small town ambiance. From those beautiful food court trees and the glossy tile pillars being the first things you see, we just knew this place would be a charming little mall. So enjoy the muzak and let me tell you the story of how this little mirrored paradise came to be. Woodland Mall story begins just around 40 years ago, in the early 1980s in Bowling Green, Ohio, which was at the time, like every sprouting Midwestern city, a booming and happening place, with 25,000 residents residing within city limits and suburban shopping malls being built just about anywhere in Ohio, it seemed almost certain a mall would soon be built in Bowling Green. And that's exactly what would happen, as in 1984, Robert Sproul and officials from the mall company of Alliance Ohio first approached BG city officials, who all said no for several years, with city officials worried a new mall might kill off downtown. Eventually though, after a tumultuous process of finding a site, a plot of land on the north side of town, off the corners of North Main Street and Newton Road, would be rezoned, with a new mall soon to be built on the site. Look at the plant. 
the thing. <laughs> it's like a little stub. It's like a little stub. Size doesn't matter for real. This is a really cute wall. Look at they have like facts about aliens. That's kind of interesting. Are these different cryptids? Between the tile floors, mirrored ceilings, and cloudscape banners, which is your favorite aesthetical site in Woodland Mall? Everything in here just screams late 80s shopping mall, and to see it now, as more of a husk of its never prosperous past, was just surreal. The mall company at this point had one other mall under their belt, being Carnation City Mall in Alliance, which itself was very successful, so it seemed as though the brand new Woodland Mall, as it would come to be known, would be just the same. JC Penny and Elder Beerman soon expressed interest in becoming anchors in this new mall, and it was so. Construction would start in July of 1986, with an opening date planned for the spring of that next year. But would this new mall actually work out? Well, only time could tell. And for the time being, residents continued to shop at the bigger and already well-established malls just north in Toledo, like Southwick and Woodville. Through construction, a worker strike, and several other conflicts arose, but the process was still fairly steady, with an opening planned for May of 1987. On Wednesday, May 13th, 1987, Woodland Mall would hold its official grand opening ceremony, which would last for several days. What residents walking into the brand new mall got to experience were the likes of fashion shows, jugglers, clowns, unicyclists, and even Snoopy the dog doing a workout routine with kids. Green and white balloons would be passed out to children whom, when exploring the mall's halls, found stores such as Abbott's Cards, Claire's, The Jolly Time Arcade, LB Shoes, Fanny Farmer, Foot Locker, K K Toys, Walden Books, and Record Den, with JC Penny and Elder Beerman, of course, operating on either end of the small straight line mall. Soon after opening, tenants like Radio Shack, Fashion Bug, Lucas Pizza, and a five screen theater would also open in the mall, and it was clear, at least for the first few months, that Woodland Mall was a smash hit. But going forth into 88, public opinions were already in a frenzy, and the mall's halls were beginning to run scares. Welcome everyone to Woodland Mall's Food Court, or Center Court, or Cafe Court, whatever you want to call it. Even today, 37 years later, it still retains those same earthy tones and warm vibes, which honestly just permeate throughout the entire mall. Those trees though, I just couldn't get enough of them. We'll be back here soon enough, but now it's time to begin the trek down the old hills wing, which contains so many interesting and liminal sights, including a glowing mini golf course, an abandoned theater, and an old toy store turned Lego Emporium, which I was just fascinated by. 
Oh yes, but of course, we gotta take a look at these old CRT TVs first, which have been hanging up since at least 2003. Soon after Woodland opened, a public opinion formed that the mall would get better in time, or fill up as more stores moved in, and that there simply wasn't enough stuff in it. Many of the spaces were still sitting empty through 1988, however, that did little to deter the mall company from further biggering the structure, announcing a new Hills department store as the mall's third anchor, along with a new Easterly Wing. On November 14, 1988, Hills would open as the mall's third and final anchor, bringing Woodland Mall to the layout you see today. Now with space for over 60 tenants, a shocking number of those were still sitting empty and unoccupied. Residents and locals alike, after being somewhat disappointed in Woodland's offerings, soon made the trip back up to the bigger malls that they were used to. Woodville and Southwick were still the top dogs, and even back then, name brands from Woodland would begin to pull out. In 1989, the theaters, which were run by mall management at the time, would be taken over by Cinemark, who would go on with ownership until closure. 89 and 1990 were two tumultuous years, as things around the mall really started to slow down. And in January of 1991, a very defeated early on mall company saw the writing on the wall and sold Woodland Mall to a company called Bog, Ohio. On the north side of BG and all around the mall, things weren't really developing as hoped. Aside from a Burger King out parcel, a car dealership, and a few industrial warehouses, Woodland Mall was still sort of on its own in the middle of nowhere, and the city's retail push was leaving it in the dust focusing on the south side of town. By the holidays of 1992, Walmart had just opened their newest supercenter in this new retail area on the south side of Bowling Green. And that's often where you would find locals, as Walmart and the other dozen big box strip centers were just so much better positioned for the town. And with that, Woodland's first anchor closure would hit hard, just five years into operation.
Somebody told a good joke. My goodness. Oh, they have Legos. Just sitting here. Somebody must play with these Legos. Why is it closed like every day? <laughs> Now that we're back in the food court, I just wanted to kick back and chill and enjoy some of these warm and fuzzy sights. The wooded planters and countertops are all original to 1987, and we were enthralled by it all. Also, see if you can spot the mall's kitty food court on the left side, which I just thought was so much fun. We'll see it more later, but I just love unique little features in malls like this. Gives them so much character. On June 19th, 1993, Hills, after just five years of operation in their new woodland anchor, would close their doors with the company's complete bankruptcy. The giant space would go on to house a few different discount tenants and organizations over the years, but would always ultimately end up the same way. Dark and empty. The 90s were a stagnant time, as the mall was able to fill its space with similar tactics you see today. Cheap discount tenants, and more mom and pop names. However, through the 90s and into the 2000s, those remaining name brands that opened with the mall wouldn't stick around. Where you see that giant mall gym right there on the left would have originally been a row of old storefronts, which even back on this old directory from February of 2000 were all sitting empty. Radio Shack would have been the only operating store, but honestly, I'm so glad to see it all reused. Even if they're tearing out the space, at least they're reusing it in a meaningful way. Folks, we have finally made it to the golden court of Elder Beerman, our oasis on this journey, and our still shimmering landmark. I hope that when this is all taken down or torn down, they can at least save that golden ribbon-esque nameplate. It's so iconic, and it would really, really suck for it to just end up in the trash. By May of 2002, Woodland Mall celebrated its 15-year anniversary with a new entrance, several new mom-and-pop stores, and a new name becoming Woodland Town Center, I guess trying to make it more bougie and hip with the mainstream. This was all ill-timed, however, as just two months later in July of 2002, JCPenney would suddenly close, leaving two anchors dark. Dunham's would reopen in the space a few years later in 2004, but the writing was on the wall. Even back then, 20 years ago, Woodland had just morphed into this little mom and pop mall complex. And even today, that's what it's sort of become. Name brands have long since left this place, and instead you have brands like Sports Zone or Goth's Chuck Rarities. Dance studios and other offices have also sprouted up all over the mall, taking up abandoned space. In 2005, Woodland Mall got its old name back, dropping their town center idea, 
and Stephen Berries would hold a short stint in the Old Hills from that year of 2005 to 2008. The recession came and went, and the parking lots almost every day through the 2010s were falling into disrepair, as the days of cars packing them completely had long been extinct. This old food court, the abandoned service desk, and the directories that are six years out of date really just nailed in the old nostalgic feels. Everything in Woodland Mall had a cozy charm to it. And if any of you are ever in the area and you enjoy these warm, cozy small town malls, stop by and check it out, because you can tell that the people that do run it really care about this place. In 2018, Elder Beerman, the mall's last original anchor, after 31 years of service in their gold-clad storefront, would shutter their gates for good as the parent Bonton stores went completely bankrupt. Cinemark would shutter the theaters for the pandemic of 2020 and never reopen it. I think it's still independently operated today, but I'm not sure. And that really brings us up to where we are today. A small Sears hometown store closed in 2023 and has since been taken over by a thrift store, but Woodland Mall soldiers on all these years later. Some might say it should have never been built, but maybe it's finally become Bowling Green's small town center, the one it was always meant to be. It's so town center. It's so bougie. Folks, I want to thank you all so much for watching tonight's episode. Woodland Mall was an absolute treat to visit, and exploring it and uncovering its hidden history was so much fun. If any of you are ever in the area, stop by Woodland Mall, do a lap, and maybe chill in the food court for a while. If you guys enjoy my Dead Mall content, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future Dead Malls episodes, and be sure to check out the Patreon for even more exclusive bonus content. Next week we'll be live at a mall of your choosing, but two weeks from now we'll be back once again blazing on into our second Ohio Mall of this expedition, which was originally directionally named, but later named after its town. Guess which mall we'll be at, and I'll shout you out in the next episode. But until then, have yourselves a lovely evening, and peace out guys. See you later.